All right, I know this is a lot to take in. This is all new, and it's all electrons. Just think about it. And electrons are dipoles, a positive side and a negative side. However, when they concuss, the negative is what we consider the electron. It explodes. The positive side of the bar magnet, which is the electron, just w walks away, and you will see it. So there's the light. There it is accelerating, and it is a particle, and it starts to glow because the white portion of the, the electron is exploding. This is what they want to see. They call those electron neutrinos. Uh, this is the actual photon back-to-back -back electrons, and when they concuss in the venturi, the black ball just rolls away and the white ones explode. Let's look at that. So don't forget, originally this was just like curved like this. And as it starts to be forced into the venturi, it's, it's doing this. Because the particle is back in here, in a, in a round ball coming through the air. Well, everybody is forcing itself into it. Now this is pulling the particle right out of the wave. So the wave bends back like this, and all of a sudden... Psst, the particle pulls right out of the wave. So we see it is a particle, we see it accelerating, we see the cherry Yankoff radiation, we see the um, interference patterns, which are just get out of my way this way, you get out of my way this way, and everybody's doing the same thing. Your big one is in the center because that's where most of the particles are going to be flowing through. And then you set up your dif diffract, you know, your uh, interference patterns. Now, Let's see what happens here, because this is where it separates. The black separates from the white. All right, you saw it coming in with the black and the white, and now you see the black balls rolling away from the explosive whiteness. It's exactly, exactly, exactly what they are looking for, and they would call this a boson, and they call this stuff fermion. Now, when we saw the bosons attached to the white balls, that's an electron. And when we saw them back to back, that's a photon. Right? And I think I now understand the different colors are only different colors because when they escape the crystal that they're being shot out of, they're a different distance from the nucleus. And that means they're either pulling harder or slower away from the crystal that they're being emitted from. All right. That is electron flood theory. That is exactly what they're looking for. Bosons, fermions. We have it in beautiful, vivid color. Now this is the light coming in, and it doesn't. It's, it doesn't have any definition to it until it starts to approach the venturi. Then you start to see the construction of it, which is um, the little black and, and white balls. That's an electron, and that's an electron. They're back to back because that's the nature of them. Like bar magnets won't go this way, but they'll go this way. And that's what's happened. Now this is starting to compress. Now that one's really starting to compress, and you're seeing spikes come out the ends because it's getting ready to explode and once it hits here it explodes and then you get the cherry cough and then you see the Higgs fields which I guess they're going to call electron neutrinos. Okay my friends as you know the electron flood theory says nothing but electrons all negatives surround the positive so it's always an outside rind of negatives forcing the other negatives to stay back a bit because they want to get to the positives. Positives can touch each other, they don't care. Negatives stay away from each other. Now, now we get into the neutrinos. Now, I believe electron neutrinos are the recombination of the the boson back to the fermion, which gives you a spinning particle showing these electron showers. And I think the muon is likely the 
the black particle as it separates because they're all neutrinos they're all supposed to be neutral uh, and they're different sizes now they call it electron muon a tau and, and again they've come up with so many different ways of looking at things but i believe this is correct that these are different size particles and when i say size i don't mean they're literally different size they have a different mass and why would they have a different mass because they're spinning faster the faster they spin the harder they hit now the neutrinos normally don't interact uh, because they're attached to the electrons the electrons are the things that interact now they're seeing these and I only think the reason they're seeing them in different sizes is because they were different distances from the nucleus. That means you have to pull on real hard and one out here you don't have to pull so hard. So the one that's going to pull real hard has to come out of there real fast. It's going to have a real impact. It's going to seem like it's bigger. And then the lesser one coming out and then the ones way out at the end they really won't do much of anything. That's how I feel this electron neutrino is, is seen. And it, all, it counts for the boson, it counts for the weak force, the strong force, and the nuclear force, which is dipole in nature. I've known that for 50 years, and now, as far as I'm concerned, it's proven. If you can show me a better nucleus, I want to see it. Proton, and, then, and this accounts for all the isotopes and all of the different particles that exist are so complex that you could never ever 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 in 10 bazillion years construct them with just protons neutrons and electrons impossible there is all electrons in the nucleus and with that you can create literally any molecule you want because you just keep adding more and more electrons that gives you tons of isotopes on both sides of the most stable atom and we have them. We know we have them. And they can't account for them. They can't account for the corona of the sun. They can't account for literally anything. They don't even know how gravity works. Because they don't understand the nature of the atom. They know it's wrong now. I mean, if they've, they, there's no question it's wrong. They say, absolutely, we know it's wrong. There's no way we can account for Well, let me see. All right, here it is right here. New boson appears, nuclear decay breaks standard model. Now, they're saying it's in the nuclear decay. I can show it in light. They're digging through piles of debris to find the smallest particles there are. We're using the smallest particles there are. We don't have to do any digging at all. So we've already shown this new boson. And it, and, and it makes everything wrong that they have said. This is a real good article about neutrinos, and then they talk about the different types, quarks, leptons, and all this, the different neutrinos, their sizes, their oscillations. Now, this is why I say, see oscillation 1, 2, and 3? They're different. The oscillation means how fast it's being pulled away from the nucleus. That's why I say they're, they, that accounts for them and uh, pretty much accounts for everything. The, the electron flood theory, to, to me, I want to see somebody disprove it. I, as far as I'm concerned, it replaces everything and it does it in a correct way. Alright, this is where they start off by showing the quarks and leptons and then they're saying, well, there's a violation here. We got lepton universality is, is violated. We found new particles we can't account for. So it's, they start off by, could the standard model be wrong? This is the same time they also admitted that um, that other article showed that this, they all came out together at the same time because I've been slaughtering them with the bosons that we found. So anyway, this is uh, Royal Institute, 822,000 geeks, because they, they everything they do is is uh, and, and they're, they're supposed to be the biggest authorities on science. So here goes. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. In fact, the only way we think we can explain what's going on is if there are new particles in the universe associated with new physics processes beyond those that we understand, and that these new particles are interfering with the B mesons as they decay and suppressing the decay to muons compared to electrons. Now, if that turns out to be the case, that will truly be momentous. Forget the Higgs. This will be the first sign of physics beyond the standard model, and it's and here it is right there. It's particle electron flood theory. It's the electrons 
create everything. That's all that exists is electrons, and they are dipoles. It's what we've built the LHC to find out. Now, the LHC is a large collider of gigantic bunches of these things, and they smash together, and now they go flying everywhere. Rod and I are working with singles of these. So we don't have to dig through piles of debris. The Large Hadron Collider is a large, colossal waste of money and time. But th it seems to be that that's all they want to do is walk around in circles. As long as you give them enough money, they'll walk around in circles forever and be very happy doing it and never, ever look at anything that stops that circular motion.